people are always discussing vitamin D because like here again in Belgium, uh, tablets come in 500 international units. And when you talk to people, well, take 5,000, they don't even believe you. So yeah. uh, can you explain a bit on that? Yeah, I mean, I was really shocked. So, in, 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 so I just spent my first uh, European winter in Lithuania, like the whole, being there for the whole winter. And as someone who's spent every winter in Australia, um, fuck, that was, that was real. Um, so what's fucked is that like vitamin D, I think we could get 4,000 units from like behind the counter, but so expensive. Like no one could afford that. Basically, you'd either take 5,000 vit like, units of vitamin D a day or you'd eat. Like it, it's one of the two. Like the pricing was absolutely extortionate. Like vit 1,000 units of vitamin D was more expensive than any other supplement in that store. Um, and all the pharmacies were the same. So um, whereas in Australia, 5,000 units of vitamin D, you buy it on the internet for like 10 bucks for like a bottle of 200 capsules. It's So where it's needed the most, it's the most expensive and unavailable, which... I mean, people can kind of work out why that is, but um, people, particularly in Europe, really need to be supplementing with vitamin D. That's what I learned from being there for a winter. Like, holy shit. Um, so when it comes to vitamin D supplementation, it's important for people to realize a couple of things. One, some people genetically suck at absorbing vitamin D from the sun and they absorb it better from food. I've got guys in Australia who are tanned to the nines they work outdoors in the sun all day every day and they are vitamin d deficient um i've also got people who i worked with in eastern europe who've never taken a vitamin d supplement pale as a ghost and they have more vitamin d than that guy and it's because that they genetically have been able to adapt to their surroundings and, and this is i fall into this category because my genetics are northern european is i have an upregulated ability to absorb vitamin d from food and a downregulated ability to absorb it from the sun because that's what i needed to do to survive um and steven you're, you're, you might be the same um so when it comes to supplementing with vitamin d if you've got an identified deficiency generally i just recommend starting with 5,000 units of vitamin d and rechecking at eight to 12 weeks if the deficient is astronomical i will start it at 10 um and then in terms of how much people need to maintain an optimal level of vitamin d um, which I go through in the lecture that I've done on this this channel a while back. Um, it, it's any some guys only need a couple of thousand units. Some guys don't need any. Recently, I haven't been taking any vitamin D, and my levels are still very robust. But I've actively been getting a huge amount of full body sunlight and consuming a lot of vitamin D rich foods. So um, anywhere from two thousand to ten thousand. I've got some guys on fifteen to twenty thousand. Uh, when I was in Lithuania for winter, I was taking twenty thousand a day. Um, and I felt a difference on 20 versus 10. But what I will add is that vitamin D supplementation is not a substitute for sunlight. Um, it's not the only nutrient that humans absorb from the sun. So the sun has a lot of really important benefits. So if you can get the sun, get as much of it on your whole body as possible, ideally at different times of the day. Um, but if all you can get is access to vitamin D supplementation, then yeah, five to 10,000 IU and then titrate it just like anything else. But get blood work, let that be your guide. I've only seen a couple of people take their vitamin D to a level that you could argue would be dangerously high. Um, I haven't really seen that many people even be able to push it up to that level, even when taking 15 to 20,000 units a day for a while. So everyone's individual, everyone depends, but yeah, five to 10,000 is a good start. And then you can adjust based on your blood work. What levels are you shooting for there? Uh, for 25 hydroxy vitamin D, somewhere between 100 and 150. Um, it's yeah. what I'm shooting for. Yeah. yeah. So that's, they that's say, like, yeah, like in depending on the blood work, like I've seen some, I've seen some panels recommend that people go between 100 and 120 as optimal. Um, but I've also seen some panels say that anything above 100 is toxicity. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I reviewed a panel the other day from Belarus, uh, and it didn't say toxicity was apparent until 250. So it really depends on the lab you're looking at. But when I did that review for that, that YouTube video that we did together, um, I went through all the literature that I could find on, on positive benefits of vitamin D and then looking at what the range was that conferred the most benefits. And it was between 100 and 150. Yeah. And then if the, the whole vitamin K thing, I mean, ideally, you'd be getting a robust amount of vitamin K from fermented food in the diet. But if you're not, I think it, it is prudent to supplement with vitamin K, but more so because you're correcting your vitamin D deficiency. So you, if you also have a vitamin K deficiency, you should correct that. And a lot of people, unless they're deliberately including fermented food in the diet on a regular basis, are probably deficient in vitamin K. Okay.